Have you ever had a dream car? One that you would do anything to have? Well, this is my minivan. It is my dream car. I mean, sure, it's got its quirks, but that just adds to the authenticity. And there are so many reasons to love this thing. It's not just the fact that it's a great hiding space for my cat or the extensive trunk space that I love. It's also the DVD player that I'm not even sure still works. It's the removable seats. It's the cassette player. It's the convenience. I can go to Ikea at literally any time I want and fit all of the reasonably priced furniture that I can get my hands on in there. I could road trip across the country and sleep in the back without having to worry about any motels. I could go off the grid forever and never be seen again. Just me and my minivan. Also, the sound system is pretty okay. And people make fun of me for driving it until it's time for a road trip. And then it's like, well, Riss, don't you have a minivan? Why, yes, I do. And I will kick your mini brain into the next century if you insult it again. Actually, a lot of the time I volunteer because it's more comfortable than any car. And I want everyone to love it as much as I do. My point is, she deserves the best. And I really love road trips and I really love camping. So I wanted to make the inside feel a little less like a car and a little more like a home. And then I went full cottagecore with it because... I mean, if you thought I wouldn't, do you even know me at all? My first step was to go to Michael's, the land of my dreams and my bank account's nightmares. As soon as I stepped in, I was greeted by literal heaven. I picked up every discounted flower I could find, which was a lot of them, and then to make up for my good fortune, I was forced to look at these signs. My barn, my rose. I ended up with a full basket because I can't control myself, which was kind of scary because Michael's is weirdly expensive sometimes, but it's okay because most of it was on sale and it's for business purposes anyway, so it's fine. Then I had to clean every inch of my car. I'm not the type of person to leave a lot of trash in it because I respect it too much. And also at this point, I'm afraid it's gained its own consciousness and has the capability of killing me if I treat it poorly. And yet, even when I haven't had passengers in there for a while, somehow leaves show up all over the ground anyway. Is this something that other people experience or is my car specifically just a magnet for leaves? Also, this car has been around for a long time, so it's gained its own small continent of dust. It's the car I remember having through all of my childhood, which may or may not be why I'm so attached to it. But either way, I love it. And if my parents sell it while I'm away at college, I will not forgive them until they replace it with another minivan. The only real drawback is that this thing is huge. Does it feel like I'm driving a tank sometimes? Yes. Is it a little scary sometimes? Yes. Do I drive like an old person sometimes? Yes. I'm just kidding. I'm not that bad of a driver. I mean, I did briefly for one moment really gently crash it into my house once, but we're not gonna talk about that. But call me a bad driver and we're no longer friends. One time one of my friends called me a bad driver because he was in the car with me when it was my first time ever driving alone without supervision in the dark and with snow everywhere. And then the next day, he failed his driving test. You know who you are. I don't forget. I'm kidding. I love you. We're still friends. Might I add that on the day of filming, it was like 32 degrees Celsius outside and it was boiling inside my car. I know a lot of things in life, but Fahrenheit is not one of them. So if you're American, that's a you problem. Never mind. I caved and looked it up and it's like around 90 degrees. Anyway, time lapses always make everything look fun and easy, but I actually looked like this. Let's call it a day. At this point, I was finally ready to decorate. I had two full bags for Michaels and the enthusiasm of a PTA parent whose only source of joy comes from going wild with decorating the gym for their child's middle school dance. I'd just like to clarify that this video was not sponsored by Michaels, but it should have been. And my plans for how this was gonna go overall changed just about every five minutes, so there's a lot of me walking back and forth and accomplishing absolutely nothing. <laughs> This is my favorite part because I pick up the blanket and where am I going with it? I'm taking it to the other side of the car, maybe to the passenger seat. Um, nope, I'm climbing back into the car and, and now we're exactly where we started. I am so smart. 
Well, anyway, I then thought it would be a good idea to hang up this blanket to separate like the driver's space and like the chill space, which was the worst idea I could have ever had because it was so non-functional, but I was determined. Oh my God, what is happening to my background? No, the Ratatouille kitchen is going away. I decided that I still didn't have enough room in the back. So I had the bright idea of trying to take out the seat by myself, which basically just involved wrestling it for 25 minutes until I figured out how to do it in a way that wasn't stupid. It's okay, we got there eventually. <laughs> If you've been losing faith in this project overall, it's okay because I was too, but at this point you can kind of start to see where things are coming together and my vision is starting to be realized. I don't know what it is with me and my impulse to decorate every single space that I own. I think it might have something to do with the fact that the transformation is a quick turnaround way to make you feel like you've been productive and been in control. And I am definitely a control freak, so there's that. These flower garlands were my favorite part of this whole project. My mom said that they made my car look really wedding-like, so I think I'm just gonna start doing drive-by weddings in this thing. I'll just go online and get, um, like, what's it called? A license to wed? Marrying permission? Anyway, I'll get that. Pull up to the couple's driveway, marry them in the back of the minivan. Boom, done. I can even DJ the reception from within the minivan. But anyway, I just used command hooks and stuck them to the inside of my car. And now I live with constant fear when I'm driving that they're gonna fall and that the flowers are somehow gonna like obstruct my vision of the whole road. And then I'm gonna crash and, um, but anyway, I think that's just my fear when I'm driving normally, but I couldn't think about that fear for too long because I was literally dying. Side note, I absolutely hate when people shame others for using literally incorrectly. First of all, the way words are used can change. Shakespeare is a prime example of that. Second of all, it's such a stupid thing to try to assert your superiority over. If you really get so pressed that people are using literally just for emphasis, you need to get a life. I also bought these lights that I thought were gonna make things very cozy and cute, but they were broken as soon as I got them from the store. So I'm going to be promptly suing Michaels. Just kidding, that was a joke. Please don't preemptively countersue me. Anyway, things were finally happening on the cottagecore front. Although I am getting a little bit worried that I'm 19 and idealizing a life that's basically no work and all baking bread when I should be like checking my LinkedIn or something. Also, let's be real, cottagecore is such a delusional dream for most of us. People would have fun living in the woods for a little while and then they'd be like, what do you mean Uber Eats doesn't deliver to my area? There's no cell reception here. And then they would move out immediately. <laughs> Before I show you guys the final result, I just want to say a couple words. To my car, thank you. We've been through so much from Louisiana, across the country to Massachusetts, New York, Montreal, Washington DC, Rhode Island. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. My point is we've been through a lot together and you better not die on me now. You have always been beautiful to me. Now you are even more beautiful. I forgot where I was going with this. Anyway, here's the final result. And here's what it looks like after all of my efforts. We've got all of the necessities, blankets, fake candles, random ceramic items, and a lot of flowers. I also included a journal so that anyone who's in my car for a road trip or anything like that can write their names and maps, just in case. Just for the record, I'm aware that was kind of cheesy. Leave a like if you made it this far and leave a comment below if you've also been doing some lockdown boredom induced transformations. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter and support me on Patreon if you want and I will see you later. Mm -hmm.